All right, so welcome everyone um, to the advising session for College of Science and Engineering students. So all of you are uh, incoming students in our College of Science and Engineering. Um, and this session really is designed to kind of complement maybe already the advising module you've been working on and the registration module you will be working on, you know, asynchronously on, on the computer. Um, but we'll say some quick hellos and then we'll get going and we'll do some warm ups and kind of give you an overview of what we're what we're doing here today. So um, my name is Jessica. My pronouns are she, her. I'm one of the academic advisors in the College of Science and Engineering. And for some of you, I am currently your assigned summer academic advisor and I'll pass it over to Jennifer. Hello, my name is Jennifer Coogan and I am Ayushi, her pronouns, and I'm the assistant dean in the College of Science and Engineering and also the director of the advising center in the college and also perhaps one of your assigned summer advisors. Uh, so it's very nice to meet you and I'm glad you're here today. Aisha. Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Aisha Ali, and I am also one of the academic advisors within the College of Science and Engineering Advising Center. Welcome everyone. I'm so excited to get to know you. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I'm also the pre-health advisor on campus. So if you're interested in a professional or graduate health program, chances are you will be meeting with me frequently um, to learn more about what you need to know about admissions but it's so nice to meet everyone. And with that, I'll turn it over to Alan. Hello, my name is Alan. I'm the Senior Administrative Assistant for the Advising Center. I'm looking forward to getting to know you guys. And one thing I'll share is we are, this summer, we are working together as a team. So as a team, we are presenting this advising presentation. And although you may have an assigned advisor this summer, it is likely you may still be getting support by from Alan or say maybe myself when Aisha's on vacation or vice versa because it is summer, right? <laughs> All right, we are going to get started. This meeting is being recorded. This is so you all can go back and watch the recording, um, but we do really encourage everyone to have like a pen and paper handy to take some notes because um, we cover a lot. All righty. But we'll start with some easy stuff first. Zoom features. I already see a lot of you know how to work the chat, so that's great. So just as a heads up, as you know, on the bottom of your toolbar in Zoom, you have the option to mute or unmute, turn on your video, um, the chat function. Also, I want to point out the when you click on where it could be more, you have the live transcript. So if right now you are currently seeing a live transcript and captioning, you can hide that or you can also turn that on. Um, and one thing I would like you all to do is find where it says reactions on your bottom screen. And if you are from Washington State, raise your hand virtually. Great, I love it. So we're just practicing raising our hands, cool. And then in the chat, for all of you from Washington State, Put in the chat where you're calling in from, from Washington State. And we'll ask some of you later to do the next one. So Washington Staters, put it in the chat. Kent, Renton, Newcastle, a lot of Seattle's. Cool. And you can lower those hands. So in your reactions, lower those hands. Great. And now for all of mine who, students who, oh, I already got a calling in from Austria, awesome. So those of you who are now calling in from out of Washington state, please put your city and state or city and country. So you can see where we got people calling in from today. You can just put that in the chat. Cool, Texas, Idaho. California. Hey, I'm from Pacifica, so we'll have to talk. <laughs> Dallas, Portland. I think I saw Hawaii, Senegal. Wow. So we got a few internationals, Minnesota, Mexico. Wonderful. So thank you, everybody, for coming from far in the Zoom universe. 
Um, and as I said, we are recording. We are going to pause throughout our meetings today for questions. You can put some questions in the chat or, you know, raise your hand, but we ask you do kind of wait till we get to portions where we're ready for questions or else we kind of lose track because there's a lot of you. Um, and we also want you following along with what we're going through because chances are we may answer your question as we move through. All right. So getting on to what we are doing here today. I know this summer there's like, you're getting all this information, you have orientation leaders, you had your academic or your advising counselor, and now you have us, your academic advisors, and we're talking about advising and registration. So kind of a timeline of what's going on in our world, the academic world, is all of you, hopefully prior to this, have been working on your Academic Advising 101 module. This is a Canvas module, so it's a course you take, and it has a lot of information that's really, really great, and I probably am going to want you to look at it again, um, that just gives you the basics of university life, life at SU, academics, it answers a lot of questions that is universal to everyone. Like at SU, we're on a quarter system. You typically take about 12 to 18 credits a quarter. The majority take 15 credits a quarter. So we really, really encourage you to go through this closely and complete it so you have the basics down of academics at SU. And it's important for your advising material. Today, you are in an advising session. This is a session for College of Science and Engineering students. So we're going to go into a bit more details of how our college works in advising and kind of give you some specifics to our college about registration information, too. So this is where we are today. This is your advising requirement for the summer, and you're meeting with all of us as a group. All right. Next, if you haven't already, you want to start your course registration 101 module. So this is just like the advising module. You might have already started this. And this really teaches you like how to register, like the nuts and bolts of using our registration system, which is called student planning, how to search for courses and whatnot. So these two modules are really key for you to self-study and kind of learn on your own and figure out what's perfect for your own unique schedule in fall. Alrighty. And I know there's a lot and sometimes it can be nerve wracking. What do you do? You're not on your own, right? We are actually going to see you all in these registration sessions that are taking place July 18th through the 28th. And these are much smaller sessions, about 20 students in each session with our whole team. And then hopefully you'll be able to register pretty easy on your own. But then if not, we are there to then meet one on one in breakout rooms. So you are supported by us, but there is a good amount of kind of working on your at your own pace through these modules. Um, and this is our kind of pause for questions. So anyone, if there's any questions on just what I've covered so far, nothing specific, we're not jumping into math, but anything just going on right now, you have a question on, this is your time to unmute or put in the chat and ask. Um, I have a question. Go Lucy. for it. Um, can you remind me where that module is? I'm just having a hard time finding it. Yeah, that's a great question. I think all of you have been receiving emails from like the Science and Engineering Advising Center, which is like SE-ADV, and then you would have seen information, hey, sign up. Um, it also, I think, is showing up in your orientation checklist. We can put the links in the chat at the end. Um, Jennifer, Aisha, anything to add on that? Uh -huh. uh just addresses that might have come from orientation at seattleu.edu, um, but you'll find it in Canvas, which Aisha is actually going to show you how to find that in just a second. Yes. And if worst case scenario, we can always share a direct link at the end, but great question. All right. But any other questions or Aisha and Jennifer, anything to add before we move on to something fun? All right, we're rolling. All right. So now that 
you all learned a little bit about us. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into breakout rooms and this is an opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about your peers. Um, so this is gonna be hopefully something fun and exciting. When we get to the breakout rooms, I'll ask you all to share your name and pronouns, your intended major, and then pick one, either a fun or surprising fact about yourself or your favorite thing about Seattle. If you're from Seattle, this would be a great thing to share with your peers who are coming in from around the country, around the world. So they have something that they can anticipate. So we're gonna join breakout rooms here in a second. Should have gotten an invitation that popped up on your screen to join a room. So go ahead and click join and we'll see you in there. Uh, we'll call you back out in about five minutes. I'm hanging out with you, Alan, and Pablo and Andrew. And if you are here, anyone you might have the notice, you can join that breakout room. Andrew got the notice. Andrew saw it. Do you hear a, a background noise from my end? Because my screen is like permanently highlighted as like it's, I don't know if you see that as well. But when I, so like when you speak, you know how you get like a border around your name? When I stop speaking, my border's still there. So it's just like, I was wondering if it's picking up on audio or not, but I guess not. I don't think so, no. Cool. But I, you know why your screen is probably because um, you're the host, maybe. But that is interesting. It's not picking up on. Your See, now that you're speaking, it took it away from me. So that's okay. nice. But like when that's I was good. not speaking, when I was muted, it was still highlighted around my my photo. I was like, something, something's up. But hey, there we go. Oh, what's up, Jenny? Everyone's in breakout rooms now, um, Jenny. So they'll be back in a few minutes. They're, we've just started. You haven't missed anything. Students are just introducing themselves. Okay, great. Thank you so much. No problem. And if you're just joining us now, the students are just currently in breakout rooms doing introductions, but we haven't really, we've just started. You haven't missed any key information. I see there's about one minute and a half on that breakout room to go. Great, I see everyone's making their way back. 
well, one group. I guess we had an early breakout room <laughs> return. Everyone else will be back in 20 minutes, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Oh, wait, there's still 30 seconds to go, but people will start returning in these 30 seconds. This meeting is being recorded. Ah. I had fun in my room. I'm glad to hear that, Jennifer. Did you find learn some interesting facts? Yeah, we had folks from across the world. Um, some who are from Seattle, a couple people from San Francisco Bay Area, uh, some shared majors um, in computer science, so it was good. Wonderful. All right, everyone. Well, I'm glad you got a chance to chat with your students. And if you've recently just joined, we're just now really starting with the heart of the presentation. All righty. And that's me. So uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the role of the advisor. And one of the first fun facts that you should know about advisors is that everybody gets one. That means you. So as Jess mentioned in the beginning, each of you has already been assigned to one of the three of us as your summer advisor. And, those, and we're all three of us and Alan uh, in the advising center. Uh, we are located in, uh, in one of the buildings. There's, there's two buildings that make up science and engineering. Um, and so we're in Bannon. Um, behind me is our new building, Senegal. Um, but you can find the advisors in Bannon. You will get a professional advisor over the summer because the faculty are mostly gone in the summer, but we're here. So we're gonna help you through orientation and registration for fall quarter. And some of you may have your advisor changed either in the week before school starts or during the, the week, um, the first week of school, probably before, just so you know. Um, and if you're directly admitted into a major, like I, the folks in, in my group, they mentioned computer science or physics or mechanical engineering, then you may be assigned to a faculty advisor. Uh, those of you who are pre-science, pre-engineering or first year computer science will continue to have Jessica, Aisha or myself as your advisor during your first quarter or until you change your major and be admitted directly into your major, which we know is coming. So the good news is, is that you essentially get both of us because even if you're admitted directly into your major, you can still work with your professional advisor. We're here to help you with, we're kind of like your home away from home. So if you're like, I don't know how to do this meal plan. I'm having issues with my roommates. I don't know what my instructor was talking about in the first day of class. I don't know how to, where to go on <laughs> my first day of class. Find your advising center, find us have our emails, have our contact information, and we will help you with any question um, that you may bring in. Your faculty advisors are a great resource as well, which is, I'm glad that you have both because we are not computer science majors. We are not mechanical engineers. And so they know the most about what can you do with a major in block? Um, what kind of internship opportunities are available? Um, what will I be doing in senior year for my projects? my senior project um, or for my research if I'm in biology. So um, your faculty advisors are really great for that kind of information. And your professional advisors are really great for helping you navigate the university, the resources that are available. And you're gonna learn a lot about yourself during this time. So if you're having questions and exploring, like doing some self exploration and going, I thought I wanted to be a biology major, but I really think I wanna do um, business. So great, we'll help you with all of that. So this summer, as again, as Jessica mentioned, you've been assigned to one of us, but it is a team effort. So it is summer, we are gonna go on vacation. So if I'm not available, um, don't worry, I put it in the chat. You can email the SCADV mailbox and you'll get any of us um, and we can help answer your question. So it's a team effort.
All right. So what are you going to do with us? So advising is a proactive approach, meaning you are proactive, not us. <laughs> so you need to come see us when you have questions. It's not passive. If you have a question, ask us. Don't wait. We don't come knocking on your residence hall door saying, hey, I heard you haven't been going to class. We might send you an email and say, I've heard you've not been going to class. Um, but if, if something is going on, you need to reach out to us. So be proactive. However, um, there you will be required to meet with your advisor, whether it's your faculty advisor or your professional advisor, at least once a quarter. That is unique to science and engineering. We require every student to meet with us once per quarter. And that is to help make sure that you are on track for your intended major. Science and engineering, as you'll learn, especially as you go through your advising 101 module and your registration 101 modules, is very sequential. You can't take calculus two until you've taken calculus one. You can't take biology, you know, level two before you've taken level one of biology. So um, we're just going to make sure that you are on track and we will help you if you fall off track. And that's OK. Do know that students fall off track. But that's why we're here. And that's why we are required to check in with us once per quarter. We will help you prepare for your registration on the following quarter. So next week when we do registration with you and what you'll be learning um, through those modules in Canvas is how to register for the next quarter. So here we are in summer learning how to register for the classes you'll be taking in fall quarter. And when we're in fall quarter, it will come very quick. We will talk to you about what classes you're going to take for winter quarter and you're not even done with fall quarter yet. So we will be here to, to do that. And again, it is required to meet with us. Uh, and that is to make sure that we are on track. I mentioned earlier, you can meet with us anytime for any question. The only silly question is the one you never asked. And if you need additional support about academics, if you have concerns about your health, um, you know, let us know. We are not the health center, but we can connect you to the health center if you're unfamiliar with how to do that. So we are your home away from home, but it does require you to advocate for yourself. All right, and now, a pop quiz. Uh, just kidding, everyone. The, well, we are going to do some polls. The polls are anonymous. We have 90 something of you. So this is really our way with a big group to kind of check in, comp check, and make sure you are all getting some really key information. Um, so the first question, I'll read it out. It's a true false. So after this session, you must email your assigned advisor to meet one on one. So maybe think back to one of those first slides where I shared we're at an advising session and then maybe we see you at a reg session. Um, so true or false, is that true or is that false? So. I don't know, we're neck and neck, it's about 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these can be a little hard to really make sure you get right. the key points. All right, we got over 90%. We can probably end and share the result. All right, everyone. So this answer is false. Now I know it can be a little confusing, but right now this is your advising session. What we were kind of covering, what Jennifer was sharing is every quarter when you're here in fall and winter and spring, you will meet with your advisor and that's required. But right now you're already completing your required advising today. And then we will all see you in groups for the registration sessions. So sign up for a registration session, but it is false. You do not need to email your advisor to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting, okay? And if for some reason we need to meet with you, we will let you know. Of course, you can always email us when you get those individual specific to yourself questions that you need guidance on, but you are already doing your advising portion today. All right, we got another one for you. Yes, welcome to college. Learning never stops. <laughs> all right, so for question two, I want you to select all the true statements about your professional or faculty advisor. So you can talk with your advisor about educational goals, changes and challenges, or connect to resources. If that's true, you're gonna check that. It is optional to meet with your advisor every quarter. For fall 2022, you will be assigned an advisor before or during the first week of classes. 
or D, the greatest people you will ever meet. So select all the true statements. All right, getting some good responses. Listen, I feel like D should maybe have like a hundred percent. I know. I know though. <laughs> Just saying. Don't we seem lovely? Yes. Maybe we have to prove it. Yes, we do. All right. So we're over 90%. So I think we can stop sharing and go ahead and show the results. All right. So yes, A. C and D are all true. B is false. Remember, it is required within the College of Science and Engineering that you will meet with your advisor every quarter. You can meet with us more if you want, but every quarter minimum, you will be required to meet with us. All right, so let's go on. All right, so a couple of you were asking, where can I find things? This is your best resource. It's the search bar on top of every page or every SU um, web page. So the search bar is going to be your best friend. Um, one of the things that if you email me a question, the first thing I do is I go to that search bar. So one of the things I encourage you to do is look for the information first yourself before you email an advisor. It'll save you a little bit of time in, in waiting for a reply. Because if you email me, chances are I'm going to go to that search bar anyway. And so you could have just already gotten there. So that search bar is on top of every web page, every SU web page. Additionally, right next to that search bar, you'll see SU resources. SU resources, the most important that you'll need to know are your email, Canvas and My Seattle U. Your email is your My Seattle U email, which you should be check checking fairly regularly. When you start classes, you should be checking that daily, um, just so you're not missing any last minute important notices, or you know, if the professor decides to cancel class, you don't wanna be the only one to show up for an 8 a.m. class, right? When you didn't have to. Um, Canvas is where you're gonna find the course modules. In addition, that's where most of your learning happens is on Canvas. My Seattle U is where you're gonna go to plan out your courses for registration and where you can see your degree requirements. So check your SU email regularly, use the search bar, and then I encourage you all to just go around and play around on the website. There's so much good information, so many great resources. It's all there for you to help you throughout these four years. I love that, that I just said play around. So if you have a question, type it into that search bar, like financial mm -hmm. services, you may find it. Um, we did want to actually, I just want to say, it's actually a good search. Like sometimes you use search bars and you're like, it pulls up all this junk. This one actually works. So trust yeah. it. Yeah. So we're, before we get into some more difficult things or more fun, we're pausing quickly for questions. Anything we covered so far that you had a question on? Okay. Um, my question is, do teachers say if a class is canceled, will they usually reach out via email or on Canvas? Possibly both, but good question for your professor on the first day of class. Those are things they'll typically go over how they'll communicate with you. Good question. Yeah. All right, folks, I have the pleasure of talking to you about math. <laughs> Fun topic, I know, exciting. I'll try to make it exciting. So um, you have already had the requirement to take the Seattle University math placement exam. Hopefully most of you have already done that. Um, there's a reason we're asking all first time in college students, no matter if you have previous or you think you have previous experience in these math classes, we need to know what your math placement is because all science and engineering students have at least two math classes and many of you have more than two. Sometimes you have four, maybe six, and if you're a math major, a whole lot more beyond that. So 
Um, it's really important for us to get you going on your math because also science and engineering major courses require math usually as a prerequisite, meaning you, you can't take that class until you've satisfied a math requirement. So it is super important, if you remember what I said about how we want to keep you on track, that you take your math placement in advance so that we know next week which class to put you in so we know where we're starting on our track. Some of you might be more advanced and past an intro-level math class, and some of you might need to step back a little bit, and that's okay. I have a little picture here of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, if you remember that story. What math placement is trying to do is find the math class that's not too difficult for you, not too easy for you, but one that's appropriately academically challenging, right? So we're trying to get you into the appropriate math class. So that's what it tells us. And there are only a few ways that we decide your math placement, and that is through test scores like the SU algebra placement exam, ACT or SAT scores, if you took those, AP and IB, uh, I forgot to include that on our slide, but IB classes too. So we'll use any of those um, like college board type programs who gave you a test score. We will also use college credit if you did something like Running Start, meaning you took a college level course already somewhere else. Those are the only ways that we are using to determine your math placement. We don't, I'm going to say it kind of nonchalantly, but we don't care what <laughs> you took in high school. It's important, but we can't use it for placement. And so it's going to be very important that you take the placement exam or be prepared to show us next week your ACT, SAT, AP, IB, or college credit from that you earned somewhere else. Math is a very complicated subject to explain in just a few slides. So I'm going to go through this slow and we will pause for questions. Feel free to add them in the chat right now or write them down and add them later. But I will pause to answer it because I probably will answer it in the next slide. So this is what it is, what it tells us and why it's important. So here's an example. If you're a biology or an environmental science major, only biology and only environmental science, here are the two math classes that you're going to be required to take for your major. You will need to take a calculus for life science you will also need to take a statistics course. That will pretty much wrap up your math classes, but remember, it's still two, and we're still talking about a calculus level course. Again, that's for biology and environmental science. Everybody else, you are taking calculus one, and there are two ways that you can take calculus one. If you feel like you struggle in math a little bit, there's a way that we can break calculus into two courses. It's called Calc one, well, we'll get into that another time. And you can read that in your <laughs> ed registration and advising modules and orientation. But there's a way we can break it down if you need to go a little bit slower in that first one. But guess what? You also have Calc 2 and Calc 3. So at least three math classes and maybe more, depending on your major. So this is why I said earlier, and I'm saying it again, it's going to be very important for you to take a math class in the fall. And again, using the Goldilocks logic, we want to put you in the class that's just right for you. So where can you find out what your current math placement score is? How do you know if your SU placement score is in there? When you go into student planning, so um, I should show you where you can find My Seattle U. Student planning is a tool located in My Seattle U. And it will show you a timeline of all the courses that you have taken. Well, you haven't taken any yet. But if you scroll all the way to the left, you'll see this column called non-term courses. And this will show everything like your pre-courses. So anything that you transferred in, an AP score, an SAT score, your SU math placement will show in this column. If you're looking at yours in your My Seattle U and you say, it's empty, but I know uh, that I took Running Start classes and it's showing as empty, you need to send us official transcripts. We've not received them. You need to send it from College Board if you took AP or IB you need, or SAT or ACT, like whatever system, whatever place you took those exams from, you need to send Seattle University that. We don't know that. You can tell us, but you need to verify that with us. And the same thing with Running Start. You may have college credit, but it, what, and it's on your high school transcript. I need to see Bellevue College's transcript or whatever school you took your Running Start classes at. I need to see their transcripts. I need to see the college transcript. And that will be sent to Seattle University admissions, okay? So this is a very important slide to know what has already been transferred in, 
did you take the placement exam? And then it will tell you which math placement you've already satisfied. So for example, on the first one, um, uh, they took the SU placement exam and they have proficiency through Math 1021. So you don't have to take Math 1021, you'll take the next level of math, which is fantastic. Um, so you'll know uh, what to take. And we'll show you a little bit later about how the great this tool is, that it will even show you a warning sign if you try to register for like Calc 3 and you don't meet the prerequisite, the system will warn you and say you don't meet the requirement for that class. So this is where you're going to find out um, where and what did you place into. Quiz, yes, just making sure that I was able to explain this well. I have two questions for you. The first question is a true false. A computer science student will need to take math 1230 calculus for the life sciences. Is that true or false? And somebody backed up the slide, so the answer should be right there. <laughs> um, we can end the polls. It looks pretty obvious. So yes, it is true that um, calculus for life sciences is not done by computer science majors. Only biology and environmental science students need to take it. Sorry, I answered. I said a word that makes this true-false question more confusing. The answer was false. <laughs> Computer science does not need to take that. It only biology and environmental science and everyone else is taking calculus one. I have another question for you. My other question for you is another true false question. Sorry, I'm gonna close this off my screen. Um, your high school pre-calculus grade can act as placement into an SU calculus course. Is that true or false? So you've got to run away here. Perfect. So everyone has answered and the correct answer is false. You cannot use your high school pre-calculus grade to determine your placement. We are looking at test scores from AP or IB or SAT or ACT or college transcripts, not your high school courses. Great, everyone. I know we're covering a lot um, and I love that. I know questions are going to be coming up. I'm going to quickly kind of touch on trigonometry and then we are going to pause for math questions. So trigonometry, the requirement, and what is a co-rec? So as you can see, there are times, and we'll get more into this later on, that to take a class, you have to either have taken something before it or take it at the same time. So if you are gonna be taking the Calculus 1 Math 1334 class in fall, or maybe in the future for our bio environmental science students, taking the Calculus class for life sciences, you need to take the Math 1022 trig class at the same time. It's a co-rec, meaning they need to be taken together. Or, you can have completed the trig class prior. And how most students do that is they actually take the SU trig placement exam. So the main thing for you all to remember is if you're going to take calculus, you likely need to sign up for trig at the same time or take the exam to test out. One thing that's great, as Jennifer mentioned, the system will tell you. So if I'm a student and I go to plan calculus one, it will alert me and say, hey, Jessica, you also need to take trig, which is math 1022 at the same time. What I do, if I add trig, then everything looks good. I don't have warning signs and I can register. Now, a lot of you may be saying, I haven't taken trig yet. I haven't taken the exam. That's okay. You can always register for a trig and then we can always remove it once you've taken the placement exam. Really the big thing to keep in mind is that algebra placement exam and your calculus placement, which Jennifer covered. Trig's a real small element. Don't worry about it too much. You can always sign up for the class and then remove it later. So we'll do a quick quiz on trig and then we'll stop for questions. 
So please select the false statement about math 1022 trigonometry. So A, when you take calculus, you must also take trig at the same time or have credit. If you took trig in high school, then you don't need to take math 1022. And really think about, you know, what we said about high school. And then the last one is if your AP score or college credit counts beyond calculus one, so you're already in calculus two, then you do not need to take math 1022 at SU. So there's only one false answer. Hopefully it's pretty obvious, select that false answer. So we're looking for the false. This one's hard. All right, Alan, we can probably stop and share. All right, so the majority of you, 85% got it right. The false answer is this. If you took trig in high school, that's great. Maybe you'll do quite well on the placement exam, but that does not mean you don't have to take it. So all of you will be taking it at the same time as Calc 1 or testing out. And then for those of you who are like, hey, I'm already in Calculus 3, I'm already at Calculus 2 because of AP or college credit. If you've already completed Calculus 1 as the requirement, you, in a sense, have already completed trigonometry. And it should show up in your non-term courses, meaning you don't need to take it because it is only a co-rec of Calc. All right. So let's break. And just a reminder, as Jennifer and Aisha have all said, please, please, please send all your official scores all your college transcripts to SU admissions. You don't send it to me, you don't send it to Aisha, you send it to the SU admissions office because admissions takes in all that info and applies it in your, in your student planning. It can take a few weeks for all that to come through. So what we ask you is to please have copies of those transcripts and scores ready to share at registration. So you don't need to email it to me a week before, when you come to registration, have that running transcript, unofficial transcript ready to show me, but still send everything to admissions so you get the credit. All right, what are our questions looking like? So again, where do you see your, your math placements? Like and what's been received and how does it count for? Jess is gonna bring us back to that slide. We talked about this, it's under your non-term courses which is found in My Seattle U's student planning tool. And again, there'll be descriptions about this in your advising 101 and your registration 101 modules in Canvas. So if this is the first time you're hearing that, make sure you reread those sections of your Canvas orientation so that you become familiar with this. Basically, yes, um, when you're sending anything from College Board, you don't send it necessarily to admissions at Seattle U. They'll ask you which college you want it to be sent to. Um, so you just click Seattle U and then they'll send it off. And the same thing for official transcripts from other schools. If you took it at like a Seattle college, um, then all you need to let them know is which school you want to send it to. And they send it electronically to Seattle University. And AP scores from last year, if you had college sports, send them to SU, they should be in your system. And I already know some of the scores from 2022 are showing up in the system. Great. So and same thing, my term or the non-term classes, that's where you'll see all classes that you think that you should have credit for. So if you did AP English or AP History. How do you check if you've sent your college credit transcript? So if you've sent an official transcript from an institution and you paid for it, you usually do get a receipt, just FYI, sent to your inbox. So you can check that. You can also contact admissions to see if they've received a transcript from you. Yeah, I, I think yesterday one of the students said, if you check your admissions portal, you can see everything that admissions has received. And so if you don't see it there, then we don't have it. Love that. Awesome. 
And thank you everyone for all your great questions um, and for keeping them relatively general. We are a group of 90, so that's awesome to keep things more overall. For specific questions, do please reach out, like very specific to the maybe that random summer class you took in Oregon um, that you don't know what it means, reach out to your own academic advisor. I should also say during this session, uh, you know, it's, if you direct message us, it may be hard for us to catch if we're presenting. All right, moving on. We, oh, there's our question slide. All right, now we're gonna get a bit more into registration specifics. So we kind of showed you already some student planning things like how you can see your non-term courses. Please make sure um, you do that registration 101 module to make sure you learn your tool. All right, so overall, here's some things we've kind of covered. Remember, we are going to be there, us, our team, with small groups of you to help you register. Huge thing. We are only registering for fall quarter courses. I love that some of you are excited to plan the next four years. That's great. But we right now, our goal is to focus on fall. Because guess what? Plans change. <laughs> so we're only registering for fall quarter. That pretty much runs through mid-September to the end, uh, mid-December. Again, these registration sessions are taking place the 18th through the 28th. You sign up for run one, ses ah, one session. You will have got that email on July 1st saying sign up. It's the same email that you signed up for this session on. Where does it take place? You are going to be registering in my Seattle U student planning and then be on Zoom to get one on one support or group support. Again, please sign up and do that registration 101 module. That is going to be your main thing. Um, and when you work through that module, because a lot of students are saying, well, I don't know what to take, <laughs> right? When you work through that registration module, it's going to teach you of your main two planning tools. One of them are these great four-year sample plans. So each of you would look at your intended major, and this was this one's for um, computer engineering or electrical engineering, and you would see what is the sample for you, or excuse me, the sample courses you take in fall. Does this mean that this is exactly what your fall quarter is going to look like? Maybe not, but it's a really good starting point to give you an idea of the classes you probably will be taking or maybe have completed, right? So if you've completed Calc 1, then you've gone to Calc 2. The other thing you'd be looking at, again, is my Seattle student planning that we've been look, talking about so much because that has all your individual information. So those are your two tools that you'll, you will learn about in those modules. All right, and now we got some things to test you on and help you out with. Yeah, so we've been talking about registration because that's the thing that you guys need to do to officially start your college classes this fall quarter. And it's really exciting. And the first time can be a little confusing and daunting, but I swear after the first time you do it, you will be such pros at it. It's gonna be so much easier. There are a few things that we do wanna make sure that you are paying attention to as you are trying to select your classes and as you are trying to register for classes. So these are gonna be the most common things that students email us about. So the first one is, um, when you are looking in student planning, you want to make sure that you understand if the courses you select have co-requisites. And remember, co-requisites is a class that you have to take with that class. A great example with the science classes is lecture and lab. So for general chemistry, general biology, some physics, some maths, there is a lecture and there is a lab component and you cannot register for one without the other. And that's what's called a co-requisite. Other things to pay attention to are what are called prerequisites. Pre means that you have to fulfill the requirement before signing up for the class. So co-requisites meaning you can take it at the same time. Prerequisites meaning the requirement must be fulfilled prior to taking that class. So if we look at this example here, this is chemistry 1500 or your Gen Chem 1. So this is the first chemistry class in the sequence. So if you're looking at the requisites and they can be 
pre and co at the same time. So remember, you're making sure you're fulfilling all the requirements. So for the requisites, you have to have placed into a specific math, math 1021 or higher, which you could either take at the same time or have taken before completing general chemistry one. And at the same time, so you have to take Chem 1501. Chem 1501 is the lab, so that is the co-requisite. So when you are signing up for classes and you're getting an error message, looking at the requisites pre and co are gonna solve a lot of those error issues that you're, you, you might receive, all right? So now we're gonna do a bit of a quiz. Let's see what we've learned. So. Do we wanna launch the poll and keep this yeah. up maybe? Yeah, let's launch the poll. So I'm gonna ask you to choose the true statements. Which statements are true to register for Chem 1501, General Chemistry 1? So you have to take the Chem 1 lab at the same time. Is that true? If it is, check it off. You must also be registered for Math 1021 pre-cal or have credit for the course, or you can, and or you can wait to take Chem 1501, the Chem 1 lab separately. All right. So you're gonna check the true statements. I'm feeling good about this. All right. All right, so I think we, we can stop the poll and share. All right, so it looks like, yes, A and B are correct. C is incorrect. So Chem, um, you have to take lecture with lab. So you cannot wait to take Chem 1501 with Chem 1500. Lecture and lab have to go together. They are co-requisites. So A and B are true, C is false. Okay. I was gonna try to respond to Ethan and then I realized it was my turn to, to talk. So um, the other piece we wanna talk to you about another pitfall that students have when they're registering has to do with UCOR. And UCOR is about 60 credits of your degree that has nothing to do with your major. Yup, we make you take some other classes that don't have to do with your major. And that you might hear from other schools called their general education classes. And this is, these are the classes that we know help you become a well-rounded person. So while you may be a computer science major, it might be helpful for you to understand the art because you may maybe do a project for a repertoire or something like that. So we wanna make sure that you can have conversations with people and think differently than people and be able to have a conversation with people who have different interests than you. So again, about a third of your degree has nothing to do with your major and it's called UCOR here at Seattle University. More about this can be found where? Yes, in your Advising 101 and Registration Modules. So what I wanna point out to you is that typically in your first year, you'll be completing Core Module 1. You'll notice that there are one, two, three, four, five, six classes in your UCOR module one. And eventually those all need to be taken. They're not all taken in your first quarter. But what you might be asking to yourself is, hey, why are two of those classes grayed out? Well, in bold next to it, it says, yes, it's satisfied in your major. So UCOR 1200 is a quantitative reasoning class or a math class. You guys are already taking at least two math classes, if not more. So why would we make you take another one? This is really more for a student who's majoring in say social work or psychology. We need to make sure that they're still taking a math class. You don't need to, you're good. You're already taking something because it's required for your major. So you will not be taking UCOR 1200. You also will not be taking UCOR 1800, which is a science class. You are in the College of Science and Engineering and most of your major classes fulfill that UCOR 1800 requirement. So you do not need to take UCOR 1800 either. So of those six, we're down to four classes that you need to take for core module one. 
And those can be taken in any order. You do not have to take UCOR 1300 before 1400. You could take UCOR 1600 this quarter um, in fall quarter when you're planning for your registration. And that's absolutely okay. The tip that I will give you though, is that UCOR 1100 is your first college writing course. You're gonna have a lot of writing in your future. So my recommendation to you is to make sure that you take UCOR 1100 in your fall quarter. If not, if it doesn't fit, then try to take it in your winter quarter, all right? So um, it's okay that it, it, it's not done right away in fall quarter, but be planning on moving it then to winter quarter. And that is because you cannot move on to module two without having a, a UCOR 1100 class. Um, some of you I saw briefly, it popped up in the chat, you already may have all your UCOR satisfied through college credit um, or from AP or something like that, which is great. If you do not have UCOR 1100, you can't take the next level, which is module two. So that's a really important tip. And let me make sure I didn't miss any other tips. You don't have to take them in order and you should prioritize taking UCOR 1100 in fall or in winter. Okay, here's a quiz. Let's see if you, I understood that. Sarah is a biology major. She has UCOR 1100 credit from her AP English exam. So she plans on registering for UCOR 1200 in the fall. What would you tell Sarah? Because you know more than Sarah. Do you tell Sarah, great plan, I'll register for it too since I have UCOR 1100 credit. Do you tell Sarah, you don't need to take UCOR module one course in order. Maybe take UCOR 1800. That's the natural science UCOR. Do you tell her, be sure to check your major requirements and review the modules. Or do you tell her D, all of the above? Thank you for going back to that slide. A little bit of hesitation from folks. There's only one correct answer. And it's a back and forth, it looks like, between C and D. Allie, we can go ahead and end that. There's clearly not a winner here. <laughs> All right, folks. The answer is C. Be sure to check your major requirements. So test taking strategy would say, hey, if the answer all of the above is there, answer that. That did not work for you this time. That is not correct. <laughs> um, you would not take, if you already have UCOR 1100 credit, do not waste your time and money by taking UCOR 1100 again. Um, you should be moving on. But don't take UCOR 1800 because it is satisfied by your major. So that's why those two were wrong. And D, like I said, well, the other two were wrong. So D can't be. <laughs> so that test taking strategy didn't work for y'all here. Pitfall. So we saw that it was a struggle for you to answer that one. So we know that this one's a little tricky. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to go back to this video because it is recorded. And you'll remember that. And you'll go back to your Advising 101 and Registration 101 modules. Yes. And all of you saying, well, how do I know? When you work through those advising and registration 101 modules, it is going to show you how to find this information and also how to use that student planning where you, where you can see those non-term courses. So a lot of the questions popping up in the chat are things that you will definitely see as you self-study and go back and review those two modules. Um, so we're wrapping up. You all have done great, even with some of our tricky questions. So quick reminders for these registration sessions. Advisors, we are there to provide assistance that day of. But all of you really need to come prepared and ready to register. And that does not necessarily mean emailing us right away with all the questions you have, but it actually means being a university student and going through the modules closely. Like you do in a lecture, you have an hour lecture, you do four hours of studying afterwards. Work through those modules, use that search bar to find your own answers. And then if you still have questions, email your advisor. So you can come prepared and ready to register on the day of registration. 
We are there to solve day of issues. So we do want you all to come with schedules planned and you'll receive you know, a reminder email from us. What's great about student planning, and you're gonna learn how to use this tool and watch videos in your registration module, is that it will alert you if you're missing something. If something's not working, you get a warning sign. So double check you meet those course prereqs and requirements. So if we're all looking now at this bio one lecture, it is giving you a warning saying you must do what? Take bio 1611, which is the bio lab at the same time. As we know, as Aisha showed you earlier, those chem biophysics lectures come with the lab. And the system, even if you forget, tells you it comes with the lab. Click on that class and add it. And then lastly, we do want you to have um, notes handy of alternative sections and options that you could register. Now, I want to tell all of you, as science and engineering students, you are going to get those important math, science, engineering courses you need. I know some students are worried, what happens if the math class fills up? You will get those courses you need, okay? regardless of what day you register for. But that doesn't mean you necessarily are gonna to get to pick your top perfect schedule. So there are many bio lectures. There are a few pre-calculus courses. Have other sections that work with your schedule. If you could take any of the three pre-calculus sections, we'll have that listed ready. So when you go to register, you have an alternative. The other hand, with U Core courses, there are like, I want to say almost 100, maybe there's like 90 U Core Module 1 offerings for fall incoming students. So you might love this engaging in the arts course, but have a U Core 1100 section ready or have a few U Core 1400 sections ready because there's a lot to choose from. So that means you can have multiple backups. So please come ready. And lastly, a few final reminders. Take that math placement if you have not already. Send all your official transcripts, test scores to admissions, ASAP, if not already. Our biggest thing that we keep pushing, I want everyone to take that time. Don't be watching Netflix when you do the, the registration 101. Engage with it like it's a class because you're going to be doing registration every quarter once you get to SU and then use your planning tools from the module to select your courses. You do got this. I know it can be a little stressful. I know it's exciting. I know it's nerve wracking. I recently talked with your orientation leaders and you know we were asking them about how it went for them two years ago or one year ago. And they're like, you know what? I don't remember much. And I was like, but did it all work out okay? And they're like, yeah, it all worked out fine. So while you may be really nervous now, it is gonna work out okay, all right? All right, so I'm sure we got some questions. Let's pause and uh, questions. Um, Jennifer, Aisha, is there already some in the chat you wanted to address? Well, somebody said, wasn't the math placement July 1st? It sure was due on July 1st, but some students missed it. So that's okay. Take it today, tomorrow, um, as soon as you can. Take it before you register for classes so that it shows up in your non-term classes. Oh, Ethan's asking his math question again. Um, math 1230 and 1210 are required for environmental science, but if our math placement score says we need to take a different class, does that math class fill the requisite? Welcome to advising. It depends. It depends what your math placement score said. So it might have said you need to start in math 1021, then that's where you need to start because you're not ready yet to move into the calculus or statistics class. But again, you can always put Math 1230 or the 1210 class into your fall quarter schedule and it will tell you if you're ready. It'll give you an error message if you're not ready for it. And I'm seeing a question coming about math placement and SAT scores. FYI, in student planning, you can view all your scores that have come to SU. There's a test score section. But if you go to the math placement website, use that search bar, you will see all the variety of scores that place you into courses. If some of you are taking pre-calculus, and that's super common for a fall, and you might have even taken pre-calculus in high school, but you still, this is college level, it's fast paced. You will still earn five credits for that 
course that will go on you know to count towards overall graduation requirements and we, hey jess yes what happens if um my math placement says i place lower than what i know my ap credit is going to say oh well the good news for everybody is we use your highest placing course but if your ap score is not in yet you want to have that score ready to show me or Jennifer or Aisha at the orientate or excuse me at the registration session. So if you've already tested out of AP Calc 1, show us that at your registration session, we'll put you in Calc 2. If say for some of you are maybe you took AP Calc and maybe you didn't happen to get a score, but your math placement, you really have questions on it, reach out to your advisor. Um, and we can always work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Those are kind of those unique situations. Yeah, final transcripts are due and we do need official transcripts for Running Start. Running Start transcripts need to come from the college. It cannot come from your high school. It doesn't matter if your high school has the name of the college. If you took a class at Bellevue College, you need to log into Bellevue College, your student portal and send that transcript to SU. It needs to come from a college for us to officially count it. And again, for, for like Jessica just said, but next week, if you're signed up for a registration session on Monday, obviously it's, if you're requesting it today, it's probably not gonna get accepted and reviewed by Monday, but have your unofficial transcript there so we can see it. I'm just writing same, th same thing for you, Deb, whatever yeah. school you took Running Start classes at. Yes. I mean, if it was an international school, still send mm -hmm. that official transcript. And, you know, I have a lot of students that say, oh, I took AP Spanish, but that's not required for computer science. So I'm not going to send my score. Still send your score. You never know if you're going to change your major. You never know if that five credits could count for something else. Just send everything. It's not going to hurt you. All right. You're in the school. Yeah. It can only <laughs> help you. And I can tell you, I work with a lot of seniors. Who are graduating and sometimes they end up one credit short because they they had they did something they did something and they ended up being one credit short and i'll ask them do you have any ap that you never sent yeah i do well yeah we're going to use that then to graduate you i'm seeing something great in the chat those of you who are taking a summer class that's cool let us know that when you are when we meet with you again that's in progress um, but when you finish that class and have an official grade, you send that official transcript. So some of you, and it's okay, we may have a, um, a partial registration as we wait for maybe you to finish a certain class this summer. That may be a really key prerequisite, but you can talk with your, um, when we meet one-on-one -on -one in those reg sessions about those individual cases. Um, I see something about if you're trying to register for calculus one math one three three four and you've placed out of the trig class from the placement exams are you still able to register for that class if it's not showing the trig prereq maybe i'm not understanding if you've tested out a trig then you don't need to take it it will show up in your non-term courses if you for some reason test have a trig Maybe you took trig at a running start school, right? I'm sorry, I'm going back too far. If you took the trig test, it will show up here just like the math placement does. If you took trig elsewhere and that's a running start credit, it will also show up here. Just be able to tell us. And you're registering with all of us during a registration session and that information has been sent and kind of covered. So please review. All right, I know it's dinner time and we're slightly over. So I think we all do wanna say thank you everybody for coming. Um, you all have, we are paired with one of us. So again, review the materials, try to find it on your own then reach out if you have questions. Anything else Aisha and Jennifer to add or Alan? Right. No, we'll see, we'll see you soon in a registration session. Yeah, all right, bye everybody.